Welcome back to the Brook Trent Homestead. Today, we're gonna to be showing you how we make a worm bucket. All right, so first thing is you need a bucket. Uh, we just got these from Tractor Supply. It was one of the cheaper ones that we could find. Uh, so the first thing you wanna do is you wanna drill holes on the bottom and around the bottom few inches of it to begin with. Um, I just use a regular um, drill bit. You just want it large enough for water to be able to drain out of it. You don't want a huge hole because then all the dirt and everything will begin to escape from it. So you want a decent sized hole. And you just start drilling holes all around the bottom of the bucket. There's no perfect method to it. You just put holes all in it. And then we'll do around the edges too. Now the purpose of the holes is just so that your wa your worms are not waterlogged. You don't want them sitting in water because that's not good for them. But you also want it to be able to hold water because you want your worms to be wet and moist at the same time. So that's what the holes are for. Now um, I'm going to hand it over to my wife and she's going to show you what we put in this and how we layer it. Hey guys, so um, what we have already mixed up, um, we buy bricks of Coco Core online on Amazon and we wet it down real good. We let it soak in until it gets nice and fibrous like this and loose. Um, the cocoa core brick is pretty small, so once you get that water, it expands. I don't need this much cocoa core in our bucket, so I'm going to go ahead and half this and put probably fill it up to like maybe a quarter of it. Yeah, probably about a quarter of the bucket. And then I will go ahead and add my rabbit manure. I'm going to add rabbit manure because it is actually considered a brown compost. Um, we have rabbits, so we have manure. <laughs> So I'm going to put the cocoa core, the rabbit manure, um, and I'm going to put some of our worms, and I'm going to add our veggie scraps. I have a bunch of veggie scraps. We've been cooking a lot with veggies lately. I have egg, pe uh, egg peels. I have coffee filters and um, the used coffee grounds. Um, anything you normally would put in a compost bin normally would be good for the worm bin as well. Um, except the citrus or any meats, um, any salt, things like that. So normally anything you would put in a regular compost bin. Another reason why I like adding rabbit manure is because rabbit manure is a cold compost and it's great by itself. But with the worms being in here, it'll break all these little cocoa balls <laughs> down and it'll just increase the goodness of the worm castings. So these are some of the castings that came out. Um, if I was to want to harvest my castings, I would put it in a bucket like this, kind of let it sit in the sun just for a little bit, maybe 10, 15 minutes and the worms would all go to the bottom. Um, and then I could just harvest what was on the top. As you can see, some of the worms are still on the top, which is fine. I'm not wearing gloves because I'm not scared. <laughs> I could just use soap. So I'm just doing a few little shovels of the worms. And worms, they produce so quickly, reproduce so quickly. So I'm not worried about putting an abundance of worms in there. Um, this is just perfect. So here's the scraps I was telling you about. We have a bunch of lettuce, eggshells, banana peels. I'm just going to add just a bit of that. There we go. And you can even take egg cartons. 
A lot of these are recyclable. These are uh, biodegradable. These are compostable. So they're perfect. The, even the ink is safe. Um, they've been do working a lot with different inks that are good for the environment. So there we go. Look at that. I'm going to add a little bit more of the rabbit manure. And this is going to be amazing for the worms and the garden. You could also do something like hay. See, this is also a brown uh, material. You could top it with the hay. So the key with worms, you have to make sure the bin does not dry out. But like my husband was saying, it also can't be waterlogged either. So with this, with me putting something so dry in here, I'm going to go ahead and take just a little watering can of water and just spritz the top. Um, they cannot, your worms cannot dry out. If they get too hot, um, they're going to shrivel up and they're going to die. Um, but with the holes, if you wanted to put this in the ground, um, this bucket, like cause some people like to dig the holes like we did and put it in the ground, they're more safe that way because, hey, worse come to worse, they can escape from the holes. But if you're not and you're storing this into your in your garage or out, outdoors in a shady area, um, it can get dangerous for them. Um, they can die and it'll be a waste of your time. So make sure this is not dry out and make sure they're getting food. Just like any other animal, they have to eat. Any other insect, they have to eat. Um, so this could encourage you to eat more veggies too. So you can make sure you have extras for them. Now let's say even with the holes, your worms and your dirt and all that gets too wet. Worst case, um, you can just add more brown material. Let's say it gets too dry. Add more green material or more water. Um, there's a way to fix this. Just make sure you're keeping an eye out for your worm bin. Um, worms at the supermarket or at the grocery store, I don't even know, whatever store you buy worms <laughs> and worm castings, they can get a little pricey. Um, worm castings especially. Um, for two pounds, it could be anywhere from 15 to $25. Um, and look at this big old bucket. <laughs> this is what, five gallons? You'd have five gallons of worm castings and an abundance of worms. You could continue just building your worm castings and your worm um, farm. Get more buckets or you even get a big tote from Home Depot. We have one. And that's where these worms actually came from was our big tub. Uh, you can do this. Um, where uh, you can go online and you can look at some more thorough things that you can print out about what worms eat and how to feed your worm farm. There's a lot of info out there. And if you have any questions, go ahead and hit the comments. Don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe. Um, I hope we helped you. Um, I really would love to see your update on your worm farms. Um, just hit me up. <laughs> have a great day. God bless you.